They're killing him. Assange's stroke reveals the Western version of the Saudi bone saw. Julian Assange suffered a mini-stroke in October during the hearing for the U.S. appeal of a U.K. court's ruling on his extradition case. The WikiLeaks publisher, 50, who is being held on remand in the maximum security jail while fighting extradition to America, was left with a drooping right eyelid, memory problems, and signs of neurological damage, the Daily Mail reports. He believes the mini-stroke was triggered by the stress of the ongoing U.S. court action against him and an overall decline in his health as he faces his third Christmas behind bars. Assange was examined by a doctor who found a delayed pupil response when a light was shown into one eye, a sign of potential nerve damage, the article reads. Julian is struggling, and I fear this mini-stroke could be the precursor to a more major attack. It compounds our fears about the ability to survive the longer this long legal battle goes on, Assange's fiance Stella Morris told the Daily Mail. Assange's stroke is no surprise, tweeted UN Special Rapporteur on Torture Nils Melzer in response to the news. As we warned after examining him, unless relieved of the constant pressure of isolation, arbitrariness, and persecution, his health would enter a downward spiral, endangering his life. Melzer examined Assange with medical experts in 2019 and published a report with the United Nations Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, saying that, quote, Mr. Assange showed all symptoms typical for prolonged exposure to psychological torture, including extreme stress, chronic anxiety, and intense psychological trauma, end quote. The following year, Melzer put it even more bluntly, writing that Julian Assange displays the typical symptoms of psychological torture, If he doesn't receive protection soon, a rapid deterioration of his health is likely, and death could be one outcome. In October of this year, Melzer put it even blunter, saying, If he should die in prison, he has effectively been tortured to death. That's the reality of it, and I'm not exaggerating. I've been working in areas of war. I have a long history of visiting prisoners. I visited Julian Assange, and I had two specialized forensic doctors with me and a psychiatrist evaluating him for four hours, and we all independently from each other came to those conclusions. At that time, his life was in danger, and sure enough, a few days after we left the prison, he entered a downward spiral. They are killing Julian Assange. Experts agree that they are killing him. Assange's stroke is just another item on the mountain of evidence we already had for this. The U.S. Centralized Power Alliance is murdering a journalist, as surely as the Saudi regime murdered Washington Post columnist Jamal Khashoggi. The only difference is that Khashoggi was killed quickly by live dismemberment with a bone saw, while Assange is being killed slowly by lawfare. The Assange extradition case is just the Western version of the bone saw treatment. It is no less barbaric, cruel, vicious, and tyrannical. It's just more media-friendly and better suited for the nice-guy fascism of the Western branches of the globe-spanning empire which rules our world. The US, UK, and Australian governments are not hacking Assange to pieces in their coordinated campaign toward his destruction, but they may as well be. The world recoiled in horror when it learned of Khashoggi's grisly end, and it won't be long before the world begins awakening to what has been done to Assange as well. Our society is becoming rapidly more conscious. We're already ashamed of things we thought were just fine a few years ago. We realize now that men like Harvey Weinstein are predators, and the Hollywood starlets people used to criticize for sleeping their way to the top were actually victims of assault. We realize now it was wrong to crack jokes about the intern Bill Clinton sexually abused. We realize that the Leave Britney Alone kid everyone made fun of in 2007 was actually onto something. 
We realize now that it's wrong to make people feel bad about their sexual orientation or sexual identity. Many movies made even 10 or 15 years ago are uncomfortable to watch now because of how unconscious they were of power dynamics we all see much more clearly now. And, whether Assange survives this slow-motion assassination attempt or not, it won't be long before society fully understands that their government and its allies deliberately conspired to murder a journalist for telling the truth. <laughs>